was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. What do you got for us on Case or No Case? Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and do that right now. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! All right, I take it to Northern California where high school honors student Shelby Allen asked her parents in December of 2008 if she could spend the night at her friend Alyssa's home. Her mother, Debbie, Debbie, rather, had a reputation in the community for being a strict mom. She had a long career in law enforcement. She was always careful to keep her children safe. She figured there wouldn't be any problems letting Shelby have a sleepover at her best friend's house. But Debbie did not know that Shelby would not be at Alyssa's house that night. She got a text from another girl, Jane, asking if she and Alyssa would want to come over and drink. Jane said both of her older sisters were home and would let them use the family's liquor cabinet. Shelby and Alyssa accepted Jane's invitation. They started drinking about 1 o'clock that morning after Jane's parents turned in for the night. Then Shelby declared she was going to down 15 vodka shots. Her friends told her it was a bad idea, but she was a competitive athlete, and she said, you know, I can do this. And so she ran one bottle of vodka dry and grabbed another, and by 1.58 a.m., she had reached her goal of 15 shots of vodka. She soon felt unwell. Alyssa led her to the bathroom. Shelby began doing the predictable, throwing out, passing out, propped up against the toilet. The next morning, Alyssa awoke, ran down to check on Shelby, and when she entered the bathroom, she saw a sight that she will never forget. Shelby's head hung over the toilet bowl. Her face was streaked in blood. Alyssa suspects that Shelby must have slammed her head into the toilet, trying to vomit. Shelby was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. She was dead on arrival. Shelby's parents immediately sought legal advice because they figured the parents in the home must have violated some sort of trust. So would there be a criminal or civil case? What is it that they could do? And they tried to figure that out. And so I ask you, and I know this is a bit of a downer case, but nonetheless, I ask you, case or no case? Now, Todd, you're the criminal lawyer, so I'm going to presume that you have an advantage in this case, so I'd like to, Denise, give you your choice. Would you like to go first or second? Denise? I'll go second. Okay, Todd Kiernan, what say you? Gonna go second. Okay. Um, Gotta take the advantage, right? Yeah, if, if that, sure. That's how it's played. You know, I, I'm not I'm not looking this up because I want answers and I'm trying to find out the answer. I just wanted to make sure I was certain. I'm going to say this is a case. That's first. But the thing that I'm looking up is the blood alcohol concentration calculation. And I'm looking this up so that people that are listening can get an idea of what 15 shots, assuming it was a one-ounce shot. Well, that's what a shot is by definition, yeah. is an ounce, right? And, and sometimes they pour them long, pour them heavy, right, do whatever. Right, right. But, yeah. but just to give you an idea, a female, and, and the fact that she was an athlete may be cutting against her, and I'll explain why. Experts that testified in my DUI trials always said that alcohol is a very, what they say, fat-loving substance. Right. And so it will be absorbed into your fat. Well, if you're an athlete and you have a very low body fat percentage, it has nowhere to go right. but into your system. So the fact that she was an athlete could lead to her getting drunker quicker. Fifteen shots could raise her blood alcohol level before calculating anything else and she did them relatively quickly relatively quickly 15 shots raise your blood alcohol level to a 0. 0.30 i mean that is a lot because each wow. each shot a standard drink a shot would raise a, a female between 120 140 pounds about a 0. 0.02 between a 0. 0.02 and a 0. 0.03 and she drank all this in an hour and right? she drank 15 yeah. in an hour wow. so i am going to say that this is a case I'm going to say that the deceased girl, her parents did file a lawsuit. I'm going to say they did that. And there is liability. The fact that she didn't – refresh my memory, Cal. Did they seek to sue the parents where the girl said she was going to stay the night, or was they seeking where she was actually drinking? The parents where the alcohol was served were the people that they, they served the lawsuit with. And And I think that there is going to be liability there. Because the parents are going to have to 
explain why it is that alcohol is readily available. They put something in the house. There'd be liability. If you have a gun in your house and somebody picks it up and you don't have it properly stored, you can face liability now the, with that. They've gone to bed. They've long since gone to bed, and it was 2 o'clock in the morning. But still, I hear what you're saying. And okay. they yeah. had long since gone to bed. And you know what? I think parents need to understand, if I go to bed and my teenager is still up, they're probably waiting until I go to bed for them oh. to do their stuff. It's not no. like they do it while I'm awake. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> yes, this is is a case they do sue the parents of the household where the liquor was served and i think that the victim's parents prevail mm. yeah interesting this reminds me of when i was some in my tender years and went over to my friend's house and we did suicides and suicides where you take just a little bit of alcohol from all the bottles in the house uh-huh. and drink it so that the parents don't see any difference in the bottles right and you get drunk as a skunk and sick as a dog to think we used to do suicides <laughs> with soda pop in idaho but anyway <laughs> we used to spin around on the bar stools and we would be off wow. let me tell you wow. so this is jane's the one whose family was going to get sued and this is a kind of an interesting one because i know that california does not have dram shop or has it has dram shop or does not have dram shop. What it means is that you're not liable for serv- um, serving alcohol. Technically, her parents did not serve the alcohol. Right. They had it in the home. And this is so close to being a case in another state, but it's not a case in California. So I'm going to say no case. Okay, so you're saying that no case was filed or, or what, do you, what do you say? I'm saying it's a it's a scenario, but it's not a case in California. Okay, all right. Well, as in Cal's making this up out of whole cloth. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, it's a it's scenario, but it's not a case. Okay, so so it's a scenario, but they didn't file anything. Not in California. All right. Okay. Well, okay. I just want to make so it's I, no case. Just want to make it clear. I want to make sure we're all on the same page here because we are obviously getting very close to our break time, but we'll have the answer here momentarily, right? That's yes, right. we will. You stay right there. We'll give you the answer to case or no case again. You're invited to call anytime. You can tweet us. You can look us up on Facebook. Whatever you want to do, just stay in touch. We love hearing from you on Radio Law Talk. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. And now back to the show. So, Cal, our case or no case, the case of the teen, deceased teen at the party and who is liable? If you want to set it up for us again really quick and then tell us yeah, who, who wins what. A girl tells the parents she's going to go out and hang out with her friend. They say, fine, she should be safe. A strict mom, a, a dispatcher or law enforcement mom anyway. The girl, of course, obfuscates, goes off to another home where they're drinking because there's a promise of getting into the liquor cabinet. The girl says, I'm going to put down 15 shots of vodka. She does. She dies from alcohol poisoning overnight. And the parents obviously are beside themselves. They don't know what to do. And uh, our sympathies to them. This is a, a case that I remember very well. This is actually a case. So those of you who say it was a case, that was uh, that would be Todd. I don't know why we can cheer. We're only cheering for the fact that it was a case, not for the case itself, right? Because it was a sad set of circumstances. All right. So let me tell you how this came out. This, by the way, happened very, very near to my neighborhood in Palisadro, California, uh, with, uh, when I was doing, you know, in the area where I did TV news. I was doing radio at the time and still am. The parents tried to file criminal charges against Jane's parents but were unsuccessful. They tried to get a charge of involuntary manslaughter filed against Jane. Unsuccessful. Debbie says she believes that Jane's actions were criminally negligent, that she could have, should have called 911 the moment Shelby began vomiting. But Jane was acquitted on all charges. The judge said it was Shelby who was intent on drinking 15 shots of vodka. The trial court ruled that Jane and her family did not owe nor did not breach any independent duty to Shelby, and therefore they did not file civil because of the criminal verdict that went against them. And so, Todd, you get one point out of this. Denise, you get none because there was no uh, civil case filed, only criminal, and that did not succeed. That is very interesting to me. The parents, by the way, still go around. Uh, to high schools and so on, and talk about the dangers 
of messing with alcohol when you don't know what you're doing, you yeah. know, and all of this kind of stuff. It has kind of become their crusade. And they tried to get some laws passed mm -hmm. where people would be held responsible. They're trying to, you know, alter the landscape with limited success, frankly, because all you can do is look and say, like any, like if a teenager were to drive too fast and, and cause harm to themselves in a car, your child had the teenage judgment gene and they acted on it in full and it cost them their life. And it's a tragedy that happens. It's a sad story. I think um, there should have been a civil lawsuit that was brought because, um, to be honest with you, they could have been found to be neglectful by keeping the the uh, alcohol too readily available to the teens. But more importantly, they whoever sued them could go after their house homeowners insurance and I, probably gotten some money out of it. I, I, you know, now that I think about it, I believe that they may have filed a claim, but after the after the criminal case. I'm not sure how it worked out. And remember that these families were all friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so they were sharing a tragedy, which may very well be why the the uh, civil case didn't go. Uh, I, I think or, sometimes yeah. that is a consideration that's often lost. Yeah. Which is, it's easy to look on paper and say, well, this suit should have been filed here and this should have been filed here. Before Denise said it, I was about ready to say... Well, the burden of proof in a criminal trial is different than a civil trial. I mean, O.J. was found liable for the deaths of Ron and Nicole, even though he got an acquittal to trial in the criminal case. But they were mortal enemies you that's know, true. at that point. Yeah. And, and that's what people forget, which is it takes a toll on people, not only grieving for the loss of your loved one, but also going through the trial process, showing up, continuances, the trial here, the anticipation, the shock and the hurt when the jury comes back and says no – Ugh. Well, I, I, there's some validity, a lot of validity in what you say. As you know, I'm a heart patient, and one of the first things when they did, you know, they get do the treadmill stress test and all that stuff, is they have you take a psychological stress test. And one of the first questions on there is, are you currently involved in, or have you ever been involved in a civil lawsuit? Because they figure that's worth five years off your life. Yeah. Because, wow. Because of the stress. Yeah. I, I have had I have had cases where I felt I could sue entities and people and I thought I would win and just let it go. Yeah. Life life is too short. I'm not going to have it adversely affect my relationship with my kids cuz you're a bear and you're, you know, I'm not going to do it. Just no. going to move on. I think so. I, th I think there is some wisdom in knowing when to say enough is enough. The child is dead. Nothing's going to change that. Yeah. It's a sad story. We still love our friends and we know that they would never do this on purpose. Mm -hmm. So let's pack up our hand cart here and keep keep walking. In yeah. my family law cases, a lot of times I will say, look, it's better that you buy your peace now. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Go to the website, radiolawtalk.com. That's radiolawtalk.com.